In the previous video, we looked at a double replacement reaction, or a metathesis reaction, and we looked at one that was fairly simple and straightforward. I want to look at a more complicated one here, but first I want to talk about the solubility rules for predicting these double replacement reactions that we can call precipitation reactions because we form a precipitate. Um, solubility rules are literally the rules that predict whether or not an ionic compound will be soluble. You can Google tables of solubility rules. You also have some of these in your textbook. So if we Google solubility rules, we see lots of examples of charts. We can follow some of these charts. Um, and essentially the format of m all the solubility rules, although every chart won't be exactly the same, the solubility rules group compounds by the ions that make them up, therefore ionic compounds, and they group them as either being soluble or insoluble. And so as you look through examples, let's look at this one, um, salts containing the group one elements are soluble. All right. There are some exceptions to the rules, then those exceptions are mentioned. Salts containing the nitrate ion are soluble. Salts containing chloride ion, bromide ion, and iodide ion are generally soluble, but there are some exceptions if it contains the chloride ion, if the salt contains the chloride ion and the silver plus one ion, since it's an exception to being soluble, that means it's going to be insoluble. As you get toward the bottom of the solubil solubility rules table, you'll find ions that are generally insoluble. And again, if there are any exceptions, they're listed there. So you need to become familiar with the solubility rules tables. Um, again, there's one in your textbook and you need to be able to use that table to predict whether or not ionic compounds will be soluble or insoluble. I'm going to assume that you can go look at the table as we're doing this example, and so you can, with me, predict whether or not something would be soluble or insoluble. So for this particular reaction, we're going to look at the reaction between calcium nitrate and ammonium phosphate. I know you've been practicing your nomenclature, and you're getting better at it, and it does take practice. But when I see calcium nitrate, I think of first it's an ionic compound. It's made up of the calcium, that is the plus two ion, and the nitrate ion, which is a polyatomic ion, uh, which if I don't have it memorized, I'm going to go look it up. It's the NO3 minus one. Ammonium is another polyatomic ion, and again, if I don't have it memorized, I'll go look it up. And the phosphate ion, again, another polyatomic ion, I've got given you a lot in this one, it's a PO4 with a negative 3. Notice that I've written those ions over here. This is part of my scratch work, and this is going to make my life easy in the long run. So this precipitation reaction, the, the problem is these two aqueous solutions are reacted with each other. Let's write the reaction that occurs. Calcium nitrate in its ionic formula, since the calcium is plus two, I'll need two nitrate ions. I'm told that it's an aqueous solution, but if I checked my solubility rules, I would see that this is a soluble compound. I want to leave a little space in, to come back and balance this in the end. Now I'm going to write the formula for ammonium phosphate, balancing the ionic charges. Again, I know you've been practicing that. And again, the presumption is I've got this as an aqueous solution to participate in my reaction, but I could check my solubility rules and see that indeed it is soluble. As a double replacement reaction, as a precipitation reaction, what's happening is my ions are swapping places. The calcium ion and the ammonium ion swap places, and one of my products should be insoluble according to the solubility rules if this is a precipitation reaction. If I look up here where I wrote the ions, it will be easier to write the products of this reaction. Here is my calcium ion. It's swapping places with the ammonium ion, so it's forming a compa compound with the phosphate ion. There are the two ions that make up calcium phosphate, and so the formula for calcium phosphate is Ca3PO42. Leave a little space to balance it. Now if I go check my solubility rules, what I see is that the phosphates are generally insoluble. There are some exceptions, but calcium phosphate is not an exception. That means this compound will be a solid. 
this is my precipitate and that's because it is insoluble looking at the solubility rules. My other product is of the other two remaining ions. Remember that we always write the cation first and so my other product is ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3. If I check my solubility rules that is soluble so this will be aqueous. Let me come through and balance this. Now when I balance a double replacement reaction that involves a lot of polyatomic ions, I probably want to keep the polyatomic ions as a group. Notice that NH4, the ammonium ion, shows up on both sides of the arrow. Um, NO3, the nitrate ion, shows up on both sides of the arrow as a group. If I start splitting up my nitrogens, oxygens, and hydrogens, this becomes a much more difficult problem to balance. Notice my phosphate ions show up on both sides. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to balance them by keeping those polyatomic ions intact. I'll go ahead and start with the calcium though. There are three calciums on the right. That means I need three calciums on the left. Notice this three means that there are six nitrates. So I'll need six ammonium nitrates on the right. That means there are six ammonium ions. So over here where I've already got three, I'll need two, which gives me two phosphates and my two phosphates are already balanced. So there is the balanced uh, reaction. This is the balance, we often refer to this as the molecular equation or the molecular reaction or simply the reaction. If I want to write the ionic reaction or the ionic equation, recall that that means I take everyone who is aqueous and I split him up into his ions. Now. I, the ionic equation still has to be balanced and I can balance it as I go along using the balancing coefficients from the, um, from the molecular equation and that might be easiest. If it's not easier for you then just write all the ions and then go back and balance it afterwards. Notice I have three calcium ions and I might want to look up here where I did my scratch work where I wrote out the symbols for all those ions because that will help guide my, my ions that I'm writing down here. Uh, ionic equations can get kind of long, so I'm going to try to squeeze it all in. Here we go. Three calcium plus two aqueous ions plus six, three times two nitrate ions plus six ammonium ions plus two phosphate ions. Notice that I am writing aqueous after each of these ions. I'm putting the ionic charges on and I'm not putting the ion in parentheses with a subscript I am writing a coefficient to balance each of the ions. Any subscripts that are actually part of the polyatomic ions stay with the polyatomic ions, but the numbers out here are to balance the ions. On my product side, I keep the calcium phosphate together. This is a solid substance. It's a precipitate. It is insoluble. It does not break apart into ions. So that's one of my products. In my ionic equation, that guy stays together. He's not ions because that's not how he appears in the solution. However, the ammonium nitrate is aqueous. It does appear as ions. And I've just brought the last bit down here on the ne next line because I ran out of room. Again, notice I have six of each. Now this reaction is still balanced and you can go through and check to see that it is still balanced. And it is balanced based on the molecular reaction. The net ionic equation is very simply the species that actually undergo the change in the chemical reaction. The net ionic equation looks for um, or cancels, let's think of it that way, the net ionic equation cancels out the ions that show up exactly the same on both the left and the right. For example, six nitrate ions aqueous six nitrate ions aqueous, six ammonium ions aqueous, six ammonium ions aqueous. These are called spectator ions because they simply watch what is happening in the aqueous solution. They're, they're floating around in the aqueous solution before the reaction, they're floating around in the aqueous solution after the reaction. And so they're not participating. And so the only thing I write for my net ionic equation is three calcium ions plus two phosphate ions yields calcium phosphate solid. And that's my net ionic equation or my net ionic reaction.